Welcome to the Windows XP Starter Edition Getting Started videos. Each video will help you explore your computer and learn more about what you can do on your computer. If you want to pause a video at any time, use your mouse to move the cursor and click this pause button on the video control bar. When you're ready to resume, simply click it again. To move quickly through this video, these buttons will take you backward or forward. And at any time, click the close button if you want to exit a video and return to the main menu. When you return to the main menu, you will see that you are currently watching this video. You will also see that this CD has a complete selection of videos to help you learn about Windows XP Starter Edition. If you are a new computer user, we recommend you watch the videos in order, but feel free to explore whatever topic interests you. Remember, the best way to become familiar with your computer is to explore and learn as you go. Select another video to learn more about all the exciting things you can accomplish using Windows XP Starter Edition. The hardware is the physical part of the computer that you can see and touch. Your computer may look different from this desktop PC, but most computers share the same basic features. Your computer monitor displays information and data on your computer screen. Like a television, it shows you what is happening on your computer and what you're doing as you use the computer programs. The keyboard and mouse are how you communicate with your computer and how you enter information. You use the keyboard to type and enter text and numbers. The mouse allows you to select and interact with items you see on the computer screen. The system unit is the central part of the computer. Most system units contain a processor that runs the computer, memory that allows you to access and work with information on your computer more quickly, a hard drive that stores your programs and files, as well as components such as CD and DVD players. Speakers allow you to hear sounds from your computer. For example, your computer can notify you when an email arrives or play your favorite music CD. Printers are what you use to produce copies of documents that you create on your computer. Now that you have a basic understanding of your computer hardware, watch the next Getting Started video to learn about the mouse. Like the keyboard, the mouse allows you to interact with items on the computer screen. A mouse should fit smoothly under your hand with your wrist lightly resting on the desk or table. As you move the mouse with your hand across your desk or table, you will notice that the arrow on the display moves in the same direction. This arrow is called the cursor. A typical mouse has a left button and a right button. For most people, the left button is known as the main mouse button. Once you're comfortable moving the cursor around the computer screen, there are four common movements you will perform with your mouse to communicate with your computer. The click is the most common action you will perform with your mouse. To click correctly, quickly press, then release the main mouse button while keeping your wrist still. Another mouse action is the double click. You will need to double click your mouse to open files, programs and other items. Quickly press and release the main mouse button twice to double click. Be sure not to pause between the clicks or the computer will interpret them as two single clicks. To successfully double click your mouse, you may need to practice the motion a few times until it comes naturally. The third mouse movement is called dragging. To drag an object on your computer screen, click on it and hold the mouse button down while you move the item. 
Release the button when you have placed the item in the desired location. Dragging allows you to easily move almost any item on your computer screen. The final mouse movement to learn is the right click. To right click means to click the secondary mouse button, which is usually on the right side of the mouse. When available, a right click opens up a menu that allows you to take additional actions, such as opening, deleting, or renaming files. Now that you have learned about the mouse, it's a good idea to practice your skills. Every time you start your computer, you will first see the Windows XP Starter Edition's Desktop and Taskbar. The Desktop and Taskbar are the center of the work you will do on your computer. The Desktop is an on-screen work area that is set up just like an actual desk. On the Desktop, you will see items such as icons, menus and windows that you will use to open programs and complete tasks. Icons look like small pictures on your computer screen. Icons act as shortcuts to help you quickly open programs, files and other items. When you double click an icon, it opens the file, folder or program in a frame called a window. Using your mouse, you can easily move and resize windows. You can also open multiple windows. To help you manage your desktop, you can open three programs at a time and three windows within each program. Every time you open a window, a button representing the new window appears on your taskbar. Each button is labeled with the name of the item. To work on a different file or program, simply click its taskbar button to bring it to the front and make it the active window. You can also minimize a window which moves the window to the taskbar. The window can be restored to full size by clicking its taskbar button. To close the window, simply click the close button. The start menu is the most important item on the taskbar. From the start menu, you can access all the programs and settings on your computer. You also turn your computer on and off at the start menu. The right panel of the Start menu provides important tools and services to help you better manage your computer. When you see a right-facing arrow like this one, it means you can open an additional menu. Place your pointer over an item with an arrow and another menu appears. Windows XP Starter Edition comes with many programs and games, so look around, open programs and even play a Windows game. Exploring the Start menu is one of the best ways to learn about your computer. Most of the tasks you will want to perform with Windows XP Starter Edition involve working with files and folders. Just like an office, your computer allows you to organize the files you create in folders. Whether you are writing a letter or creating an artwork, you will want to save your work as files and store your files in folders on your computer. The My Documents folder, which is available from the Start menu, is the best place to store your documents, pictures and other files. My Pictures and My Music are also available, so you can easily organize your pictures and music too. You can create new folders to organize items such as a music CD or a photograph album. To create a new folder, click New Folder under File and Folder Tasks on the left pane. And then give your new folder an appropriate name. When you create a document in a program and you want to save it as a file on your computer, click the File menu and then click Save. When you see the Save dialog box, you will need to specify a location and a name for the file. Again, storing files in the My Documents folder will help you stay organized. Once you have decided where you want to save your file, then you need to name it. The best names are short, 
but specific enough to help you remember what they contain. When you are ready, click Save to confirm the location and name of your file. If you want to open a file that you already saved on your computer, and if you have the program open that you used to create the file, go to the File menu and click Open. Then select your file and click the Open button. Now that you have learned about files and folders, take a look at the next video to learn about Windows XP Starter Edition's extensive help resources. The Windows XP Starter Edition videos are just one of many different resources designed to assist you as you learn about Windows XP Starter Edition. Many of these help resources are available on your computer desktop by double-clicking the Getting Started Guide icon and the My Support icon. The Getting Started Guide walks you through the PC experience. It provides an overview of how to understand and successfully use Windows XP Starter Edition to perform the most popular computing tasks. Even if you have previous computer experience, you will find valuable information in the Getting Started Guide. Click on My Support and discover a comprehensive set of technical resources. Windows XP Starter Edition Help covers basic tasks such as working with the Start menu and printing. Help topics are available for all popular Windows programs such as Internet Explorer, Outlook Express, Windows Media Player, and Windows Messenger. Important security information is provided as well as how to share your computer and much more. My support also includes a rich set of instructional materials with tutorials, beginner lessons, and links to Microsoft website resources. While the help resources are extensive, don't forget that the best way to learn about your computer is to explore on your own and learn as you go. Many people also enjoy learning with their friends and colleagues. All you need to search and view information on the World Wide Web is Microsoft Internet Explorer and an Internet connection provided by a local Internet service provider. You can open Internet Explorer from your Start menu. To view a specific website, type the website address in the address bar and then press Enter. Website addresses usually start with www followed by the name of the website. This toolbar makes it easy to explore the Internet. Click the Back button on your toolbar to go back to the last page you are viewing. And if you want to make a print copy of a web page, click the Print button. If you need help finding what you're looking for, you can use Internet Explorer to search the Internet for the people, businesses and information about subjects that interest you. Simply click the search button on the toolbar, then type a word, phrase or sentence describing the information you want to find. You can then select from a list of search results to find what you need. When you find a web page or site that you like, you can add it to your favorites list so that it's easy to find again. Or you can locate a web page you recently visited by clicking the history button. The history bar contains links for websites and pages visited in previous days and weeks. Once you know how, exploring the Internet is easy and fun. All you need to exchange email with family and friends is an email application, like Outlook Express or Hotmail and an internet connection provided by a local internet service provider. When you open the email program, you'll see your inbox. Double-click a new email to read your message. After you read your email message, you can reply to the same email by clicking the Reply button.
clicking reply automatically fills in the email address of the person who sent you a message and displays the original message at the bottom of your email. If the email was sent to multiple people, clicking Reply All adds everyone's email address to your response. The Forward button allows you to send an email that you received to a new recipient. Forwarding a message displays the original message at the bottom of your email. To create and send a new email message, click the Create Mail button. In the To box, type the email address of the person you want to send the message to. If you wish to send the email to more than one recipient, separate email addresses with a comma or a semicolon. In the Subject box, type a title for your message. When you're finished entering your message, click the Send button. If your email contains an attachment, you will see this icon displayed. To read the attachment, open the email and double-click on the attachment. And if you want a printed copy of your email, click File Print. Or just click the Print button. To delete a message from your inbox, select the message and click the Delete button. If you want to find a message that you deleted, open the Deleted Items folder and locate the email. With Windows XP Starter Edition, you can stay in touch with your family, friends and colleagues. With Windows Media Player, you can use your computer as an entertainment center. If your computer is equipped with a sound card, graphics card and speakers, you can listen to CDs and view DVDs right from your computer. To play a CD or DVD, press the button on the front of the drive. Insert the disc and then press the button again to close it. Windows will either automatically begin playing the disc or bring up this dialog box asking you what you would like to do. If you select Windows Media Player, the music or movie will start. DVDs typically open within a window, but you can also view the video full screen. In addition to playing discs, if you have an internet connection, you can also download music, videos and more from the Media Guide feature. Windows Media Player is a powerful and customizable program, so explore its menus to learn what it can do. You can learn more about Windows Media Player in My Support. Paint is a drawing tool that allows you to create both simple and elaborate drawings. Drawings can be either black and white or color. You can print your drawing, use it for your desktop background, or paste it into another document. Paint offers an assortment of painting tools that are used for drawing shapes and applying color to areas of your image in various ways. Let's take a look at a few useful tools to get you started. The pencil tool is your basic drawing tool. To change the color of the line drawn by the pencil tool, click the color palette. The paintbrush tool is similar to the pencil. Again, select the color palette to change colors. Additionally, you can change the size and shape of the paintbrush, including square, round and slanted shaped brushes. You can use the freeform or rectangle selection tools to select portions of your picture. Once you have made a selection, you can move the selection around on your drawing, copy it or edit it without affecting the rest of your picture. The magnifying glass or zoom tool allows you to get a closer, more detailed view of an image. Remember, the best way to learn about paint is to explore and learn.
Writing letters and reports with Windows XP Starter Edition is easy. Let's look at writing and editing a document in WordPad, which is a word processing program that is part of Windows XP Starter Edition. To create a new document, click in the text area of the program window. The blinking vertical line is your cursor. It marks the insertion point for you to start writing. To enter text, simply type on the keyboard. As you type, you do not have to press any key to go to the next line. The program automatically does this for you. However, to start a new paragraph, press the Enter key on your keyboard and then continue typing. If you want to change the format of your document, use the Format menu. For easy access, you can also use the toolbar to format text, change the font style, add color, and set your paragraph alignment. While working on your letter or report, you can save your work by clicking the Save button. Saving your work allows you to open it later for another use. The first time you save your file, you'll see this dialog box. Choose the appropriate location where you want to save your file, such as the My Documents folder. You will also need to choose a file name. Make sure to enter a simple name to help you remember what the file contains. Select Print Preview from the File menu to see how your document will look before printing. If everything looks correct, you can print the document by clicking the Print button on the toolbar. Once you have finished the letter or report, be sure to save your file, and then close it by clicking the Close button. To reopen a document you've created, click the File menu and then click Open. You can then choose the document you would like to open. You've just seen a few of the basic word processing capabilities available with Windows XP Starter Edition. Explore the menus and toolbar to learn more. A printer transfers the documents and pictures you create on your computer to paper. For your printer to work properly, it must be connected with a cable to your computer, and your computer must have the necessary software. Windows XP Starter Edition includes printer software for many available printers, and will automatically detect the printer and install the proper software when the printer cable is connected. To print a document, open it, and then select Print from the File menu of the program you're using. No matter which program you use, you will always find the Print command in the same place on the File menu. After you select Print, a dialog box opens so you can customize any options you wish, such as number of copies and print quality. While a document is printing, a printer icon will appear here. When the icon disappears, your document has finished printing. With Windows XP Starter Edition, printing is just that simple. There are three easy steps you can take to help make the information on your computer more secure. Use an Internet Firewall. A firewall is used to restrict information that comes to your computer from other computers. Update your computer. And use up-to-date virus protection software. Virus protection software is used to protect your computer from viruses sent through email or through a program downloaded from the Internet. We'll explain more about these topics throughout the video. Windows XP Starter Edition makes managing your computer safety very easy using the Windows Security Center. You can get to the Windows Security Center from the control panel or by double-clicking this shield in the bottom right of your computer screen. The shield is an indicator of your system's overall security health. When everything is running properly, it appears green with a checkmark. However, if the shield turns red with an X, 
you should investigate the situation for a potential problem by going to the security center. The security center is divided into three sections, firewall, automatic updates, and virus protection, each representing an essential function for helping to protect your computer. A firewall is a computer program that helps protect your computer by preventing other people on the internet from gaining access to your computer or the information stored on it. In Windows XP Starter Edition, this step is taken care of for you. The firewall is always on. With automatic updates, Windows XP Starter Edition can routinely check for the latest important updates for your computer and install them as they become available from Microsoft. From the Security Center, you can set your computer to check for these updates automatically and download them using an internet connection when they become available. When an update is available, you'll see this icon on your taskbar with a message informing you about an update. Updates are pieces of Windows software that have been improved since you purchased your computer and are available to you free so you can stay current with the latest technology. Click the message and follow the instructions to install the update. Or for added convenience, you can also set your computer to automatically install all updates. While a firewall helps make your computer more resilient to the majority of online threats to your computer, using a virus protection program or antivirus program is another important tool to help your computer detect and remove dangerous programs that might get past the firewall. Viruses are destructive or deceptive programs that spread from computer to computer over the Internet so it's important to install and use up-to-date antivirus software. If your computer has antivirus software installed and the antivirus software is up-to-date, the security center displays a green light. If the light is yellow, you may need to update your antivirus software. If the light is red, ask your computer retailer for more information on purchasing an antivirus program. With Windows XP Starter Edition Security Center, you can manage most of your essential security needs. Remember, just watch the shield to help make your computer more secure.